Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. Is that a bang I hear? Are you up to something? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's our Independence Week. Well, 4th of July is the Independence Day, but I don't know about your neighborhood, but fireworks in my neighborhood don't end on the 4th of no, July. No, we get to hear them and see them out my kids' windows, and for the most part, it is good, safe, fun. We want you to stay safe, and on today's show, we'll share some Red Cross tips to do just that during this firework season. Hey, it's auction season around here, and that means it's time for you to clean out your attics, your sheds, your garages, bring your donations to TV44. You can also go to the store and buy brand new items yeah. and donate them to TV44, or perhaps uh, donate a trip that you might have a timeshare that you could give to us as a blessing to the station, a blessing to someone who then would bid on it, mm -hmm. and all that money continues to help TV44 grow 30 two plus years that we're at now incredible in this community praise god for that we have some really special stories coming up today about the community the lima area tennis association offers free lessons to youth this summer we'll share you some information about that speaking of the youth a sibling group has a new permanent home today we'll introduce you to the wilson family a very touching story and lots and lots of love in that family and it's fitting because love is our 2016 faith challenge character trait of the month and let's think about love. Andy, we've got a verse to go with that today. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. A lot to unpack in that section, but unity. You know, Pastor Doug Boquist over at Lima Community Church says there's one unanswered prayer of Jesus, and it's unity. You know, mm -hmm. he wants unity. He asked his Father that they, we would be one just so that we could see how he and his Father are one, and that prayer is unanswered. And we, we need that unity. We need that love amongst yeah. believers so that then we can go and love our communities. And a step toward that unity is loving others. You know, mm -hmm. um, there are rifts within the churches. There mm -hmm. are rifts among Christian believers, and the first step is to uh, go before God and to heal those, yeah. because when we can't unify among ourselves, right. it is hard to show love to those who need to see that loving change, the message of Jesus Christ. Well, some area individuals with the Lima Area Tennis Association certainly love the sport of tennis, but possibly even more, they love sharing it with the next generation. Matt Finkel reports. Each summer, the Lima Youth Tennis Program, which is put on by the Parks and Recreation Department and the Lima Area Tennis Association, continues to grow. It's a seven-week program. The kids come. It's a free program. If they don't have a racket, we provide one for them to use. The balls, we have a team of instructors that's led by our pro, Jeff Brown. Um, and so throughout those seven weeks, they learn about tennis and how to play tennis and how to score tennis. This has been a great program, um, you know, bringing awareness to tennis to the community. Uh, we get a lot of kids out here. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm very satisfied with, you know, the, our student instructors this year, kids coming out here. But overall, like, overall, though, this program, I think this year is by far the best year I've been here. The kids are not only enjoying themselves, but learning how to excel on and off the court. It also actually teaches you education and it helps you learn how to play real tennis and it helps get kids active and get into sports. This is about the best tennis I've ever played in my life. Oh, I'm telling you, this brings so much joy to me to see all of these kids out here learning to play and having a good time. Um, you just It just doesn't get any better than that, honestly. The juniors, ages 9 to 17, meet at the College Street Courts on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And there's also a Pee Wee program for ages 5 to 8, which meets once a week on Tuesdays, providing a great way to get young athletes started in the sport and learn a skill that they can hopefully enjoy years down the line. Our job is to, you know, create a fun atmosphere for tennis, you know, that gets more kids, you know, interested in playing the sport. Hopefully they continue on playing tennis then throughout their lives because tennis is an all-inclusive sport. Um, you can play from the age of five till you're 85. Uh, so that's why, you know, we, we love having all the kids out here learning how to play because it's a great sport. In Lima, I'm Matt Finkel. 
Thank you, Matt. Well, with Independence Day taking place this week and lots of fireworks happening in many different situations, we are sharing some Red Cross fireworks safety tips with you. Never give fireworks to small children. Let them watch your sparkler celebration, but not yet be a part of it. Light only one firework at a time. Don't get tempted to try and create an incredible fireworks show with multiple booms. That is not a good plan. <laughs> I'll never relight a dud. If it's a dud, just throw it out. And before you even begin, well, maybe you shouldn't just throw it out. Probably put it in a bucket of yeah, water, right? Yeah, right, because we don't want to start find out it's fires. not a dud. That's right. Make sure you do have at least one bucket of water nearby. Keep it just in case something is set on fire. I want you to stay safe this holiday week. Something happened here at TV44 back in May that was not expected and surely not hoped for. It was our graphics computer, and to be point blank, it broke. Yes. It broke. It broke. It was taking place. We had a live sports report going on, and all of a sudden, the graphics started floating in front of our anchors, around. They didn't work. We couldn't make it work. It was over. It was and done. As, as cool as that might have seemed to have floating graphics, well, it puts all of our studio productions in jeopardy. This summer, in fact, you see some graphics. That's a graphic right there. But that's because we've taken parts to our two production trucks that we'll need in the fall to do our TV 44 auction broadcast, to do our different sports presentations that we go out in the community to share the love of Christ and to broadcast local sporting events. We've taken pieces from those trucks just to cobble something together for the next couple months in and time for us to get a new... cobble is correct because it doesn't even work properly. When we try to, every week, when we get together to tape these segments and bring Faith and Friends to you, I hear from the production department saying, well, we had to restart it umpteen times. Yeah. Well, it's not taking it in. And that indicates that even with our cobbled together stuff, mm. our, our cobbled stuff is not working. So we're going to have to buy something new. And that's why we sent you a letter last week to share some information with you about that. That's right. We need well, $75,000 $75, for this $000. new uh, technology that is going to last us hopefully another 10 plus years. The, the system that just broke last lasted 10 years, which in computer terms is an eternity. We were mm -hmm. so thankful that God really sustained that graphics machine that helps in all of our local productions, whether it's WizQuiz, uh, the OMEA music festival that you get to enjoy, our choirs that come in and sing during Christmas. So many different elements, including Faith and Friends, are dependent on this system. Lasted 10 years, we need another 10 out of a new machine. That's right. If you have any questions about that, we'd certainly be happy to talk with you about it. We also are asking for you to ask God if you should be a part of helping us raise the money needed for this project. Um, we're calling it the Graphics Breakdown Summer Project. And you can find out more by giving us a call, going to our website, or you can donate anytime throughout the summer. And we are incredibly thankful. We are. Thank you so much for your partnership. As always with TV44, we're grateful for your involvement in this TV station and in your partnership proclaiming the love of Jesus Christ all throughout our area. Well, next on Faith and Friends, we're continuing our theme of love. Imagine this is your life, and maybe you're at this point. Your kids are grown, you have grandchildren, maybe you even have great-grandchildren. And what if God says, I want you to start a family again? Hmm. How would you respond? For Jackie Wilson, the response was, okay, God, I'm your servant. And today she can also add, once again, the title of mom. Dancy Moeller has a special interview with the Wilson family. Well, thanks so much. I am so pleased to introduce Jackie Wilson to all of you. Jackie has quite a story, and her story is here with her, really. Just part of it, though. Um, Jackie has adopted um, a, a new family, really. And um, I just am so excited to talk with you and, and learn um, your inspiration and motivation. So welcome to you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having us here today. Yeah. So you want to introduce your children to us? Yes. Uh, to my left is Dayanne okay. Wilson. Her nickname is Day Day. Okay. And Shy Wilson and Annette Wilson. And you are how old? Go. Eleven. You're eleven. Shy? Nine. Ten. And ten. Wow, so um, you have a new home, and how long have, um, I, I guess this June has been a monumental month for all of you because yes. this has made, this month, 
they became officially Wilsons, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So how long were they in your home? They were placed in my home um, October of 2015. Okay. So they was there about six months, maybe six and a half months. Okay. And so Jackie, uh, tell me, um, you know, just the thought of fostering children is a big endeavor for a lot of people and yes. one that a lot um, of us are afraid to consider. And then adopting is another, um, you know, challenge um, that that has a lot of twists and turns to it as well. Yes. Um, and then when you are 60 years old, 63. You're 63 now, yes. right? But when you started thinking about this, how old were you? 63. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday coming up next month. <laughs> Okay. So July the 4th, 6th the 4th. That's true, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and you have already raised your own children, your yes. grandma and a great grandma. Yes. Which is amazing, congratulations. Thank you. How did you get here? How did I get here? Mm -hmm. Dancy, if anyone would have told me at age 63 that I would raise a second generation of today's children, yeah. I would have said, Heck you no. Know. Uh-huh. Heck you no know to the no no. <laughs> <laughs> um it was part of the plan. It's definitely part of the plan. The greater plan. The greater plan, absolutely. When these kids were placed in my home and uh I read their profile, it just my heart just it just saddened my heart. Yeah because here are three beautiful children. Mm -hmm. They are. That no one wants to adopt together, okay? Are they blood siblings? These are blood siblings. Okay. And uh, that saddened me. Yeah. I was raised in a home with a single parent as well. Oh, okay. But mother had kept all her kids, Uh huh. okay? And um, I said, my God, Children are our future. Right. We have got to get about our father's business mm -hmm. and grab these children, give them stability, give them a home, help them to get the best education they can get in life. Mm -hmm. We want these children to become productive citizens. Mm -hmm. And they can be in a Christian based home. Absolutely. They can be. So did someone approach you or were you looking to become a foster parent? Well, no, I, not to adopt. Uh, one of my daughters, Keisha, and I discussed going back into foster care. I, this is my second time fostering children. Okay. Uh, my former husband and I fostered in the early 80s. And uh, yeah, that was a void here. I'm a writer and I've published two books. You, you're aware mm -hmm. of that and I'm writing again. However, there was still a void in my life. Okay, you felt something I, was Something missing. was missing, mm -hmm. and I knew it wasn't God, okay? Mm -hmm. And so T Keisha said, well, Mom, why don't you get back into foster, fostering children? Mm -hmm. I said, wow. So I did the research and uh, fostered many, many teenagers, but then there was a point that I knew it was time for a switch. I had to grab the babies. I had to get the younger kids. I got gotcha. you. Okay. okay. Primarily, my reason to foster is to introduce these kids to Jesus Christ. Oh. To impart that word, the seed of salvation, into this kid's spirit. Right. So that God can draw them to him. Right. And do what they have already been called to do. Well, you know, when you said that you had done this in the 1980s, life has changed dramatically yes. <laughs> since the 1980s. I sure, um, you know, you have all been exposed to social media. Um, you're on the computers at school now. Um, you know, you have the phones and so forth. Um, you know, those are great temptations that are stealing our kids, mm -hmm, you know, absolutely. and their minds and their hearts. Yes. Um, would you say that's been a challenge for you to, to deal with some of that? Well, when I fostered the teenagers, yes, okay. that was a great challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, with the younger kids, it has not been a challenge. Uh, I just say, hey, this is going. We're not going to be on the computer. 
they do not have a cell phone. They do not have an iPad or any electronic device at this time mm -hmm. because that comes with responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to open up um, the world to my children like that. Mm -hmm. They have already been exposed to a lot mm -hmm. already at a younger age. So basically when we're on the computer, we're pretty much on it together. I'm monitoring to see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We play games. Um, so, you know, yeah. I, it's not a challenge for me at this point. And I do, do not believe it's going to be one because Good. I'm starting out with them. Exactly. You know, doing exactly. it the right way. Well, how do you, you know, um, when folks become grandparents, they always say that's the greatest joy because they can start over again, but they can hand the kids back to mom right. and dad. But um, would you say that this is a, another beginning for you, someone as a parent, that you know you can look back on raising your own children and, and some of the joys, but also some of the struggles, and you can use that as an example? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how, how are you different? Wow. You know what? I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I feel complete. Matter of fact, I am complete. Um, I'm doing what God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm just, I'm glowing. Yeah. I go to bed earlier, but. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do, but also have to get up earlier. Right, now. but they go with me. You know, sometimes they pile up in my bed and we're going to watch a movies together and guess who go to sleep first? I do. Yes. <laughs> yes. But uh, it's a joy having these kids in my home. It's a joy and it's an honor. I, I want to tell the audience that we don't have the mic mic'd right now, so we don't have microphones on you for uh, anyone to be able to really hear you. And I would love to talk with all of you, but could you give me a, a nod that looking back maybe two years ago where you were to where you are now, are you much happier? Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. I'm sure that um, you've got so much love in your home now. and and stability right I mean you know that this is this is your this is your life and this is your home so I, I'm thrilled for all of you so was it a difficult process because that is another thing that I hear a lot is that you know there's so many hurdles to have to jump over in order to get here you know what it was not difficult for me because it was a part of the plan yeah it wasn't anything that, okay, I'm going to adopt these kids. No. When God spoke to me and said, you are to adopt these kids and raise them in the fear and admonition of me. No, it was no, the process was easy. That's incredible. It was simply easy. We did what we had to do and, and that yeah. was it. Yeah. It's amazing. It I is. Mean, it, really it is amazing. It is. And, and when you, and when you, just listen for that voice, and, and, and you know it, don't right, you? Right, absolutely. You've got that calling in your heart that right. doesn't give up. Doesn't give up. Doesn't give up. Doesn't so, give up. So um, you would say you're complete now? I'm, I'm going to say that today, but, you know, don't you for wonder? Now. Yeah? For now. Yeah. yeah. We're set for now. Exactly. Because exactly. we never know. Definitely. Well, congratulations to all of you, and um, I'm thrilled for each of you. And, Jackie, thank you so much for for being a mom to our future generation and, um, and listening to God's call. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. Well, this week is our final installment of the six-part series, Vows to Keep for Your Marriage. And our subject is keeping score. Right now, can you think of something your spouse has done in the past that still causes you frustration? David and Tracy Sellers think God has something to say about that. Here's Jennifer. So we have David and Tracy Sellers with us again this week from Vows to Keep. And before we jump into the topic they have, I'm going to make a confession to you. In about 22 years of my marriage life with my husband, he has never figured out how to make the bed. And it drives me crazy. I can't tell you how many times I go home and I think, oh, couldn't he just pulled the covers over today? But you know, God's been working on me and saying, what does that really matter in the end? The enemy wants to let that be a wedge and allow me to continue to get frustrated, but I have to keep my focus on the things that God has. And you know what, in the end, whether he makes it better or not, it's really not going to affect 
our marriage. Well, maybe my issue is just a minor one, but I know there are marriages everywhere that have things that can trip up those covenant relationships. Yes. And what are the things that you see in your counseling as you work with couples in these situations? I would say the biggest one is keeping score. Hmm. Always being in judgment of the other person. Where are they at? Where are they performing right? What have they done so now I can get this because they had that? Like she got the new couch so now I get to go golfing three weekends in a row and just kind of have a little comeback from what she did to me. Or perhaps the wife didn't pay the electric bill and now they got slapped with a late fee so the husband's like got that invisible scoreboard on the wall. Well she's down two points for that. And then she dresses up for a date and calls the sitter and all of a sudden the scoreboard is even again. Scorekeeping in marriage is a big one. So that's not a good way to live a marriage? I mean, it sounds like it comes out even in the end. <laughs> we find that oftentimes uh, couples that are keeping score, it's, it's usually just one of them that's keeping score. Uh, it, it is not necessarily always these exact same scenarios mm -hmm. that we talked about, but you do find that the intimacy in your marriage is almost always affected by someone who's keeping score. And when, when things are good, they're really good. But when the scoreboard's looking bad, boy, the intimacy is just about gone in, in your marriage. The deciding factor on what your day could look like, on the, the decisions you're gonna make, oftentimes is based upon what's on the scoreboard. And in a marriage, it can almost be this invisible uh, determining factor that's gonna set the course for our days, our weeks, and the, the tone that we have in our marriage. So as we talk with couples, we often ask them, you know, what are the things that you might be keeping score on? Because scorekeeping basically implies that someone owes someone something. There's a mm -hmm. debt there. There's something that we're keeping track of. And we're often not very good at keeping track of the debt that I might owe to mm -hmm. someone else. We're also not very good at keeping track when our spouse is maybe doing average or normal, things we just expect them to do. They, they don't get any extra points or any ongoing points for that. It's only when it's something super awesome in many cases that we would give them any kind of extra points or any points at all. I would think the average person is not thinking I'm keeping a score. It's kind of a subliminal thing, but it definitely happens. So Tracy, what's, what's the next step for people? I think that I want to read a parable right now from Matthew chapter 20 and this pinpoints it. These are some guys who are keeping score. Let's see what they did. It says, a landowner went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a certain wage for the day and sent them into his vineyard. Now this is like five, six in the morning. These guys are gonna work all day. The landowner goes into town three more times and hires more workers at nine o'clock, at noon, and at five. So when evening comes, maybe you can guess what happens. Call the workers and pay them their wages, he says, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. He pays them all the same wage. And not everyone has the same reaction. It would be interesting, I think, for us to think through who do we relate to? And as we talk to couples, mm -hmm. this is one of the questions we ask them. You know, who do you relate to in this parable? Because many of us are going to relate to the slackers who started at the end of the day <laughs> and are going to be very rejoiceful about the fact that I just got paid the same wages as, as everyone else. I mean, this was a very generous wage. And those people tend to be people that we could say, okay, you probably recognize that God has been very gracious to you and maybe you're very good at accepting that grace. Mm -hmm. In some ways, we're not necessarily thinking about the consequences of the fact that maybe we don't deserve it. Um, there's others though that would be saying, no, I really relate with the person who labored all day. I've been in the hot sun and I just watched someone get something that I deserve for all my hard work. And that's not fair. That's not fair. Those tend to be the people that are the scorekeepers, so to speak, right? If we're worried about fairness, this becomes something that in marriage will cause us a lot of problems. Jesus tells us that we can learn from him and not carry around a heavy load because when I know he's keeping score on me, that's a heavy load for me to carry. Mm -hmm but he's realized that's a heavy load for him too. Always waiting for me to mess up, always watching for that. And me always wondering when I'm going to and when he's gonna change that number on the scoreboard. So let's learn from Jesus here in Matthew chapter 11. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and that can be very wearisome and burdensome, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, 
and my burden is light. <sighs> okay, <laughs> we don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> we can learn from Jesus. Jesus is basically saying, you know, he's gentle, he's humble, and a humble heart is someone who says, I'm going to serve. I'm going to give. My desire is for you first. My desire is to not be on a performance treadmill or not to not put you on a performance treadmill because that's not what, what God does of us. Jesus is basically paying the price for all of the negative things that we've done and he levels the playing field for us. He asks us though to learn from what he's done. He asks us to do the same kind of things. Mm -hmm. He says don't keep score basically because he's not doing that. So our job is to do for the other but not expect anything in return. Definitely and I think when we keep the light of the gospel just right in front of us, that reality of what Jesus has done for us, then it's going to be easy to forgive. It's going to be easy to not keep score anymore, to emulate our Savior. And what a relief in the end. It sounds like it is so important, no matter where a person is in marriage, to make sure that the scriptures and a personal relationship with Christ is just at the forefront every single day. It absolutely is. Yeah. Wow. Incredible information from David and Tracy Sellers, Vows to Keep. We hope you have been gleaning a lot from all of these segments that we've been sharing with you. And we want to remind you that they are available for you to watch again anytime, any moment of the day, in that heightened moment where you think, ah, oh, this is just not going to get better. Or maybe when you're praying for your children or your grandchildren and you're watching their marriages dissolve as well. This information is here for you. You can watch it on our website again at WTLW.com. And here's where you can get more information. You can connect with David and Tracy personally. Remember, they do marriage conferences. They do marriage counseling. They have all kinds of opportunities to provide fun, exciting things in marriage and some of those lifelines that will keep it going. There's their website on the screen. They've got a Facebook page and you can email them right there, vows2keep.com as well. Info at vows2keep.com. You can learn more about Vows to Keep at VowsToKeep.com, or you can watch any of those six parts of our six-part series at WTLW.com. Click on Faith and Friends. Hey, I have some stuff, some neat stuff. Wow, that is a bag full of neat stuff. This is. These are auction items. Western Sizzlin', mm, Happy dinner. Days. All right. These are two gift certificates for family memberships to Prairie View Golf Club. Includes all members living in the home, kids ages 24 years and younger included. Wow. Is that for next year? Next that is for season? next year, yes. Next That's golfing season. Deal. We'll have two of those available at the TV44 auction. The Spencer family in Waynesville, we certainly thank for that wonderful donation. And these are just a few of the gift certificates. Kings Island is also in here. All right, I was just there two weeks ago. African Safari Wildlife Park. Of course, we are interested in more donations of gift certificates of any kind and of any size. So if you own a business, any type of business, lawn care business, um, Osborne Book Business, um, Food Place. We'd love a, a gift certificate from you and you get some free promotion here on TV44 through that. So it's a good deal for everybody. It certainly is. We are accepting your items Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can call ahead for any other drop off days and times. And we're particularly interested in high quality furniture as well as automobiles and vacation getaway spots. So don't limit it to those. We do accept any item that is of value, except... Except we cannot take entertainment centers, organs. P pipe organs are out. The musical organs, we don't take body organs either. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Pianos. Go to the hospital clothing. with those, please. Well, I just want to be specific. No organs of any kind. But of all the We're other things... We're glad you're an organ donor. We really are. <laughs> bring your auction items to 1844. <laughs> Baby Road, Lima, Ohio, and yes, please plan to attend this year's auction. Golf membership, all kinds of things could be yours. It is September 10th. We love your auction items, but not quite to the extent that God loves you and me. Nothing can top that. And before we close, one final look at our verse as we focus this month on the topic of love. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you are called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit, just as you were called, in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. God is all that we need. 
Hope you can dwell on that and really revel in the love of your Father this week.